I have a last word, I believe. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, witnesses, for being with us today. And, um, you know, I, I guess one of the things that really weighs on us, since the amount of income per worker is partly dependent upon investment per worker, and that's dependent upon productivity, which is dependent upon the money in our capital markets that go in and are invested. And yet, if we looked uh, at this trend, the U.S. has half as many publicly traded companies traded on exchanges as today as it did in 1996. Uh, that's a pretty precipitous drop. And that trend is particularly alarming for a Californian like myself because, uh, you know, the startup capital of the world is out in our neck of the woods. And so firms that would otherwise go public have been deterred. And arguably, if you, if you listen to the firms, they say they're deterred by unnecessary hurdles uh, on compliance, which, uh, what, what was it Aristotle said, balance in all things, which are unbalanced. Uh, and, and the consequences of that is unrealized economic growth that might otherwise occur and job creation that might otherwise be driven. So Governor Engler, the stockholder proposal resubmission thresholds have not been changed since President Eisenhower's term here. And clearly, they're outdated. Uh, but Rule 14A8 also allows shareholders who've held $2,000 of a company's stock for one year to submit a proposal to be included in a company's proxy statement. So looking at that in its totality, what are the consequences for companies and everyday shareholders of this seemingly arbitrary and relatively low $2,000 floor, and I'm just, just thinking this through, uh, for example, just 20 shares, or point zero 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 three percent of Apple's worth, uh, then uh, you, you have that included in the company's proxy statement. How will scaling this barrier of entry to a company's valuation benefit shareholders, and how would it benefit public companies? How would it benefit the economy? Uh, Congressman, great question. I think when there's additional cost, whatever is the reason for it, and this is a set of circumstances that do raise costs. You heard a, a $90 million number tossed out earlier, but depending on the company, it can be uh, more or less substantial. There's reputation risk also that can be brought into play. That's hard to put a value on, but, but it raises costs and I would argue then diminishes uh, shareholder value. And that shouldn't be a desirable thing, especially when the, the other side of this argument is that the question or the proposal in this case might have been around the track two, three or more times and uh, has very low likelihood of any success, yet it does distract uh, however much from management time, from legal time, and, and it adds also, I think, complexity to a proxy statement which ought to be focused, as I testified earlier, on the most material things that can help an investor decide, do I want to own this stock or should I sell it? So again, we've got half as many publicly listed companies trading on the exchanges. Um, so I'll ask you, Governor Engler, also about no action letter decisions from the SEC that have been arguably erratic and inconsistent, especially since the Whole, food, whole Foods uh, case. Right. How proposals impacted shareholders? And is keeping this decision process at the Commission staff level appropriate? What well, does I, Congress do here? How, how could Congress help on this? Mr. Uh, Congressman, I think that the, the first step is, can we get the SEC back to work on this, and can the Commission itself address this? They've got it within their own rulemaking authority to handle this problem. It was really created, we felt, by the staff initially. We're surprised that it wasn't addressed. Uh, there's a division, clearly, in thinking over at the Commission. And so they punted on it, but the punt, uh, ended up putting a lot more 
I would say, proposals with relatively little merit uh, before sh shareholders, and it was unnecessary. Well, I thank you. I thank the, uh, the panel here, and Mr. Chairman, I think my time has expired. <laughs>